So uh, my name is Ben. I'm Colin. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about 21 the movie, which just came out. So we went and saw it on opening night. And it was pretty interesting if you uh, are into blackjack. Um, everyone has their opinions on it. But we're going to share with you today kind of the top 10 things that we noticed about the movie that are inaccurate when it comes to actually playing professional blackjack. So there's kind of two veins of these things. Um, these were... the. The movie is supposedly based upon this book, which is based upon true events. So, of course, Hollywood did its own uh, thing with that, and we understand that. But at the same time, we play blackjack. You want to play blackjack, so let's talk about blackjack. So, uh, Colin's going to go over the first thing that he noticed. Yeah, the first uh, inaccuracy was the quote made by uh, the leading actress who said, there's not as much strategy as people think in blackjack. And I would say blackjack is a game that's all about strategy. Um... It's whether you're playing the strategy correctly or incorrectly determines if you're a winning player or not. So she was uh, definitely off the mark by saying blackjack is not uh, a game of strategy or there's not as much strategy as people think. The second thing, tipping uh, <laughs> casino personnel. So in the movie, they're just ridiculous. They don't really show exactly. You see at one time the guy tips $100 to the cage. You see another time he just flips. It looks like two $5,000 chips or $1,000 chips. You don't even really know. Um, just because he got lucky and won some hands and was in a rush. So as professional blackjack players, that is not something you can afford to do just because you get lucky and win a few hands or um, get money from the cage. It's just tip people like crazy. So as we've already talked about in other videos, that'll cut into your win rate significantly. So that's pretty inaccurate as far as beating the game of blackjack. Now, what the MIT team did, who knows? We can't say one way or another. Uh, the third thing is that they're obviously using the high-low count system in the movie, uh, and they define that in the book. But in using that system, you have to convert from what's the running count into what is the true count. And there was never a time at which they explained or ever passed or ever seemed to use a true count, uh, which means they weren't playing the strategy properly, or at least they didn't express that in the movie. Yeah, and that's probably the most difficult concept. So you can kind of see why they left it out a little bit, but at the same time, pretty stinking important when you're talking about uh, counting cards. Um, the fourth thing is that you see all this kind of harassment going on with this Lawrence Fishburne character, the uh, security, and no one ever called the cops. Okay, so hello, this isn't uh, Vegas in the 60s, this isn't the mob here. So when someone punches you in the face and hands you a business card, um, you can call 911. So that's pretty stinking inaccurate, at least in modern day settings. You know, like I said, in the 50s or 60s, um, where the police all worked for the mob, a um, little bit different story, but not today. So if you have a cell phone, call the cops if someone punches you in the face. The <laughs> next thing that was inaccurate is that there were two times in the movie that they had uh, two BPs, big players, playing at the same table. And uh, there would be no reason to ever do that when you're using the BP approach because there's nothing that two big players could do at one table that one couldn't do at the same time. The only reason to do team play is to have some people that fly under the radar by keeping their bets small and not changing them, and then one person that comes in and is betting larger and is always betting larger, and that's the big player. By having two people at the same table at the same time, they're wasting resources by having two people do what one person could do, they're wasting uh, valuable cards because they're having four spots between the two players instead of what one person could do themselves, which is two spots. It just seems like a really poor decision if you were going to do that in blackjack. But it looks really cool. <laughs> um, number six is that the big player or BP was always called in, at least the examples in the movie, on huge counts. So the examples were given was they said suite or magazine, which I think was their uh, signal for 16 or 17. So what you need to know is that in the game of blackjack, in a six deck game, um, if you have a running 16 count or running 17 count, that your edge is actually really significant. That happens very, very rarely. So most people, when they use a big player strategy, will actually call a BPN around a true one to two, maybe even three, um, but usually far before then. So the fact that those call-ins were happening then um, seems a little ridiculous. Like I said, we're not exactly sure how the MIT team did things 15 years ago, 
um, but that would definitely not be the most optimal way to play today. Uh, the next thing that was inaccurate about the movie was that they would all walk into the casino together, and their whole strategy was to not be associated with each other. That you have spotters that aren't associated with each other, and you have the big player who isn't associated with any of them. But multiple occasions, all four or five people would walk in right next to each other, or right in front of each other, like uh, buddies walking in together, and that would go completely against the whole strategy of using spotters and big players. Cool. The eighth thing um, that we noticed about the movie being ins inconsistent is that the main player was kind of, uh, or the main character, sorry, was kind of, what was his name? Who knows? You know? Who cares? Okay. Um, we don't even know. But uh, Ben? Okay. I think it was Ben, someone <laughs> said. Um, so he was kind of played out to be this like super genius who scored excellent scores on all his SAT, ACT, who knows what, IQ, um, and that made him qualified to be the big player. Now, that's not true. First of all, in order to play the game of blackjack, it's kind of a uh, series of simple mathematical processes. But more than anything, to be a big player, the, the best skill that you can have is kind of a multitasking awareness of what's going on in a casino environment. So, you know, they, they continue to emphasize how you have to be this, like, super smart guy, and he replaced the weird bad guy. Um, but that's not really valuable or important in a real-life professional blackjack for a big player. Uh, the next thing that was inaccurate was that uh, the only time you ever saw them lose at all was when their emotions got involved. The rest of the time, they're winning every single night, night after night. They're coming back with more and more money. And the reason that uh, professional blackjack players can get away playing at the same casino uh, for long periods of time is because you don't always win. You're shifting a very small advantage that the casino has from the casino's advantage to your own. And because it's such a small advantage, you win more often than you lose, but you win some, you lose some, you just know you're going to come out on top. In the movie, they win some, they win some more, they win some more. Then when their emotions get the best of them, then all of a sudden they start losing. That's not all how it works. And then they win more. <laughs> um, all right, the final thing, number 10 on our list of ridiculous blackjack uh, falsities in the movie 21 is the facial recognition myth. So there's this idea going around in the movie that these guys need to get out into the casino because any time this new software is going to come out and it's going to ruin everyone's chances of playing blackjack. So guess what? This software came out a long time ago and there have been card counters counting more than ever. So the idea with this, there's other programs, um, one was called Biometric, um, and what they do is they kind of like measure the different facial features. Um, there's article after article written about how hard and difficult they are to process and how they basically have no bearing on most card counters career or ability to make money playing blackjack. So in the movie they kind of make this out to be the boogeyman, it's this huge thing that's going to end card counting for everything and bring the card counting apocalypse. But in real life we know uh, it's not that big of a deal. So anyways, um, we hope you enjoyed watching the 10 myths um, of blackjack in the movie 21. So keep your eye out for more. There are plenty more. Um, other than that, we hope you enjoyed the movie. It's kind of a fun little uh, way to show that blackjack can be beaten um, and that casinos are beatable places. Otherwise, check out more information that we have on blackjackapprenticeship.com. we got a training course and more tips there for you. And uh, this is Ben. I'm Colin. And uh, we'll see you next time.